Hey everyone, Marito here. So, if you've been following the Scratch Pad or you've been following, you know, this YouTube channel, uh, you'll know that very recently I completed a, for me, long-term, eight-week Quake mapping project for my friend Newhouse, who has been, for years now, hard at work on a little something called the Blue Episode. And my two levels, which are going to be named the Dreamscape and a Rook's Pawn, are the final two levels in that pack. And I've already rambled a ton about the process and inspirations for everything on the postmortem that I did, so go to the download page on my site if you want to read that. But the one thing that I haven't shown off yet is my nearly half hour's worth of work in progress capture footage that I was sending to him and was sending to all the other people around me while I was working on the level. And so as a way to immortalize it, I figured I would go through and show you something of a highlights reel of everything and show you what didn't make it into the level. So, here we go. So, when I first started building the level, the stuff that I was building wasn't, it didn't end up making it into the final thing. It took a couple tries for me to figure out what, what exactly I was doing with it, where I was going with it. So this is probably the earliest footage. This is from around June 20th or so, and he only reached out to me around the 13th or 14th, I don't remember. So this was just a little map snippet, basically, of what I was trying to do with it. And you could see some things that ended up making it into the final level, that checkerboard floor kind of chess thing, uh, the watery sky. But overall, I'm just... I, I do like this, though. This was kind of my idea for like a secret that didn't reward the player, Kind of like more of a trap than anything else. I obviously didn't go with that. But uh, the floating box thing I didn't end up going with. And uh, just the whole kind of shadowy darkness of it. But I wasn't too pleased with this. I didn't really know what I was doing. This is kind of just one weird area in the level. So I ended up scrapping the whole thing uh, around the 24th or so when I started building what would eventually become the level proper when I finally had a beginning because I'm I cannot build out a order worth of shit it's just it's just not what I do so here's the first footage I have of the level proper and this was after I came up with this weird sort of intro and uh, you can tell that once I build something I don't really like to go around changing it so this is still pretty much as it is in the level itself uh, aside from a couple things like how I activated the window secret and what have you but um oh and the nail gun too i think i moved the nail gun up because i didn't want to give anyone help when it came to the little potemkin ending uh that comes in the hard hallway so a little bit later on into the level you can see that uh there's this little cutout in the floor of the the, uh, the night area and originally what was supposed to happen the way you're supposed to progress through this this section was you see that key up there. You're supposed to grab the key and then this plinth would rise out of the floor and then monsters would teleport onto it. And I really liked that, but by the time I got to this point, I had intended the sewers area to actually be a secret area, but then I just went nuts with it. And I couldn't justify having all of that content be a secret because there wasn't enough in the actual level itself. So yeah, you could see that it rises up out of the floor and then there's the, the theme. And I really liked that. It was, it's a good, tense encounter but it just it just wasn't to be and um in up the stairs actually uh rather than it there being that shooting gallery kind of voidy secret area there's this uh it's just a it's just a teleporter and then a, a illusionary wall that's supposed to kind of prevent you from seeing up there it's a tiny bit slipshod So this is the early teleporter sequence, and initially I think I had this idea of making it like a teleporter maze that you had to figure out the correct route through, but obviously that didn't happen. But uh, part of the potential places that you could go were these older levels, and I liked them way too much, so I, made, I basically made the focus of this section on those. I don't know why the barrel's in the corner, but there's just so few places in this level that you would be able to get kind of uh, a slaughterhouse going that I ended up just pumping these full of enemies and uh, you could see that I didn't have the Forsaken Citadel bit actually built yet so it's just it just goes into what would become the Mary Secret which is actually an old map scrap of mine you could see that the teleporter just kind of leads you back into the sewers the normal flow of the level continuing on from there 
So skipping ahead almost a full month here, we have the initial run of the plunge section. And as you can see, I initially only intended for the pent and the thunderbolt to be used to fry those zombies up at the top, and then you access the plunge section and then just use your normal weapons past that. But uh, there were two big reasons why I ended up changing that. The first one being uh, ammo. For whatever reason, I have the toughest time in the world determining how much ammo the player would have in, you know, in a given section. And I was finishing the level with you know hundreds of shells and nails in reserve, and then. I would get these reports of people coming back to me being like, yeah, I had to fight that Shambler with rockets. I'm like, that's a little bit of a problem. So that was the first reason uh, why I ended up reconfiguring it to use uh, the Thunderbolt throughout. And the other reason is just that it was a lot cooler. You know, how many people outside of a deathmatch context have been able to really use the discharge on the Thunderbolt? It's not a thing that was really in the base game. I've not seen it a whole lot in custom levels. So I figured it was just it was just a cool thing to play with. And the plunge section actually ended up undergoing a pretty major overhaul uh, in terms of the brushwork. You can see that like the tunnels are floating a little bit here. And I usually don't like to, expanding on what I said earlier, I tend to not like to rebuild areas unless they don't work in a gameplay context. Like, if there's something specifically wrong with them, then yeah, I will delete everything and then rework it. But if I can avoid that, I tend to. And there was just, I just sort of went through this and I was like, yeah, it's it's kind of junky the way it is. So I ended up going through and, and rebuilding it and kind of reworking the shape of the tunnels. But the concept of the, the section has always been airtight and uh, the spawns were also kept. I don't usually like to face the player against spawns unless I can make sure that they have the upper hand because being up against a spawn when you're not ready for it is a huge pain in the ass, but works fantastic. Very pleased with it. And this is the earliest footage I have of the Kuras kind of cavern area, and uh, I actually, that was the point at which I needed to split the levels, and I'll explain that in a moment, but that was back when the levels were still one level, and I ended up having to do kind of like a, a half-life thing where you can quote-unquote see into both levels, and it doesn't, it doesn't work quite like in half-life, because the Quake engine of course doesn't support, you know, proper level transitions and landmarking quite like the Gold Source engine does, but... I think it works well enough to thematically or visually link the two levels together. But yeah, at this point, I was having some pretty significant issues keeping <laughs> keeping the entire level playable. And uh, as you can see, as we're coming up here, the hub area used to be perpendicular to this hallway. And I had to rotate it because of a very peculiar glitch that I was having that I've, I've since dubbed the Outer Limits glitch. And what the Outer Limits glitch is, is that uh, you'll actually walk outside of the playable bounds of, I don't know what it is, probably the network protocol or something, and you'll, your view will just reset to the world origin, and it's unplayable. So that was, that was fun. So I had to split it into two levels and kind of work around it, but I eventually got it into something that I, I, was, I was pleased with. And you could see that I already had the three sort of gauntlets kind of set up, and I, I had text there originally. And Newhouse was like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta put the kibosh on that. And I kind of agreed, but I also still kind of like it. I don't know why. And jumping back in time a little bit, uh, by July 31st, I had actually implemented the Mary's Secret proper, because at this point it was kind of going un unused. And <laughs> that's that's bad idea, Mary. Do not listen to him. But anyway, so... I figured it was, especially with the level split, it would be kind of a, a nice way to... to call into what would become the reigning texture theme of the next level and again kind of provide a linking point to the IK blue stuff that I was I was using um, and this part's seriously like a pain in the ass I I have died many times here uh, while I'm trying to capture you know runs of these two levels 100% runs for these I've definitely died a bunch here um, but it's it's a it's a challenge So there isn't a whole lot of outtake footage to show from the actual gauntlet section because I just wanted the levels done at that point, so I really wasn't second-guessing myself. But just because it's one of my favorites, I figured I would show off the, the Crusher gauntlet because I just think it's 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 a ton of fun. I think it's hidden in a really kind of neat way where you have to ride the lip of the Crusher up. But I also just think it's fun to run the Death Knights into the Squishers and squish them, you know? And uh, nobody is safe from them in Quake. Uh, not even me. I have squished myself in these a couple times. But, yeah, so the, the initial concept of uh, these sort of hidden areas was that there would be no monsters in the, the actual gauntlets themselves. 
and you would uh, if you if you found the hidden area, of course, there would be monsters in them. But the big thing is that you would be able to use the actual trap of the gauntlet against the monsters. That actually gives way to what the the second area of the the, the level is. This sort of bit with the rook, which is actually one of the few things that I didn't build. I don't normally like to rely a lot on prefabs, but like the domes and also, like I said, the chess pieces were Newhouse, so uh, and he did a far better job than I ever could have on him, so yeah, there you go. But that's what actually gave name to the Rook's Pawn name of the, the Blue Episode version. I kept the original names in the id1 release because I just, I don't know, I wanted to separate them out a little bit, but I definitely prefer the Blue names. And so the Rook's Pawn, I mean, it's a Rook, and how does a Rook take pieces in chess, but it just kind of like moves them out of the way. and. In the case of this, it squishes you, so that's kind of, I don't know, perversely amusing to me. Alrighty, and the ending, <clears throat> which ended up actually getting totally revamped in the last week of building the map, because I had built the level, and by the time I got to the, the actual ending itself, I was seriously in autopilot mode, I just did not want anything else to do with it, so I came up with something that I, I didn't really like, and... Uh, of course, what I came up with was, was way better, and I think Newhouse is planning to change it a third time. But for posterity's sake, here's the original, original version of the ending. So, to begin with, I guess I should mention that I am a stupidly aggressive Quake player. So, given that I was just on autopilot at that point, that's what I built. I built something that was meant to be really fast, and you're supposed to blow through it. But I didn't realize that not everybody plays it that way, so when Newhouse... Uh, was playing through it, it came up that he actually had trouble keeping up with the ending uh, because he was being so cautious about it, even though he had a quad and a pen, he wasn't blowing through it. So he would run out of his quad and get his ass handed to him, and I was like, oh, fuck, okay. So I guess I gotta figure that part out again. Um, so what I ended up doing was, in the second area, I replaced the fiends... I took the fiends out entirely, and then I actually made the ogres, rather than them being triggered by killing the fiends, they're actually triggered by the button presses. So the player has a little bit of control over the speed, and I definitely think that helps slow it down a little bit and make it a little less schizophrenic, I, I suppose. And then a little bit further down, I guess it's fitting that I started the level without a clue and kind of ended it without a clue, because I just came up with, like, uh, let's put some vores over, like, lava, and it's a small, cramped, kind of crappy space. Uh, this bit here that was supposed to be an homage to the pain maze, uh, that actually did get kept, because like I said, the whole kind of concept for these levels initially was like map homages, and you know, you just count them and see where you, you come up with them, but yeah, this was not, this was not great. As much as I do enjoy watching these guys explode into a fountain of, of jibs, gibs, I don't know how you say it, uh, I definitely came up with something better in the final version of the level. 